I hate setups like these. Uh. Team Can you get Can someone tell them to start? Team Secrets turn to pick. Team Empires turn to pick. <laughs> Ten seconds remaining. Welcome back, everybody, to ESL One Manila 22nd game number two now between Team Empire and Team Secret. The scene hole. Didn't really have a whole lot of information to go on as we entered this series, but it certainly hosted a lot of surprises with Team Empire showing some strength that I think none of us can say we really expected out of them. I sort of think that I mean, Empire, they just made really good calculated plays, but at the same time, like Secret, there were a few missteps by them uh, throughout that game. Like for example, they uh, they didn't it didn't really feel like they were able to fully utilize uh, the relocate with the next combination. There are a few times where uh, Empire just set things up really well, like that bottom uh, fight where they were smoked up and waiting for it. They made the game really really hard on on secret. Basically, Universe was never a threat at any time, point in time of the game. They couldn't use relocate offensively. Whenever they did, they would lose. I think they got a, a few kills off of it when uh, when they kept skirmishing in the middle lane, and that's about it. You know, for the first 15, 20 minutes, the game was really, really close, and Team Secret was doing what they needed to with the lineup and buying themselves time. And then from there on out, it was just Empire taking full control of, of uh, and utilizing that they had vastly superior team fight. Well, this is interesting as we go into game Team number two, Team Secret. Starting off with kind of the same strategy that we saw from game number one. Leading with the OD, they're going to get another one of those kind of defensive saving style heroes in the Chen rather than the Wisp or Dazzle that we saw before. Meanwhile, Team Empire picking up the Doom and Puck seems like general team fight uh, and initiation for them being prioritized. I like to talk about this from time to time, probably too much, but I think uh, if we talk about trademark heroes, the uh, OD for RTC and the Chen for Poppy is a pretty good opener when you're Team Secret. Yeah, I think the, the Chen especially for Puppy, everybody knows about it already, but uh, sort of think I, the OD definitely wasn't the issue in the last game. Like The pick itself worked out really well. There was a time period where the hero was just dominating around the map, but... It was probably the only thing that actually yeah. they had going for them. It just kind of felt a little bit disconnected because they had they had this hero that was dominating the early game, but then they had the Naga that couldn't really provide anything in fights. Do you think that would have been a better offlane on that game? I don't know. I think I think you saw last game like the dangers of having both Dazzle and Wisp on your team, just because then you you have two supports that don't really do anything in the way of uh, coming back into the game. Mm -hmm. You saw how much the Lion was able to do once he just got a Blink Dagger. The hero became online again and was perfectly fine. I think they could st still go back and, and pick the Wisp again for, for this lineup. I think it's it, it's as good as, as Dazzle is with Chen. Yes, but I don't know about that because Wisp, I still think Wisp needs some farm. Like, he's not the type of support that's going to buy wards for you constantly and like Sentry and things like but that. But Chen can be. Team I guess, but it's... I think Puppy usually he usually wants a little bit more farm. What is it that Chen offers you that Dazzle does not that makes you think that they can still run that kind of combination? It's that he offers more aggression and, and map control in the in the early games, especially. He's not as weak as as the the Dazzle is, and then he still provides that heal for for Wisp and then back and so forth. I think Wisp and, and Chen is a uh, these days underrated combo of supports. It's something we saw a lot being played two years ago. Almost to, to the point where you would say if they get this support combo, they'd win the game. I really this Vengeful Spirit uh, pickup. It uh, sort of preemptively counters a, a potential Bat Rider pickup. It's fair enough. There was still a Lion in the pool. Team Empire choosing not to pick that one up, which means Team Secret will still be able to get their hands on it. And this does mean they're going to be able to make up for perhaps some of the Disables that is missing from this Chen. And Team Empire immediately going for the Spectre now. They had so much success with it in the first game. I think Spec plus Puck anyways synergizes really well together. Uh, I think 
both those heroes they kind of just work out well you've got the puck that can set things up for specter uh the specter provides enough of a late game advantage so that you don't necessarily have to pick up a damage dealing mid or anything like that or a like a true kind of like half position bid. Ten seconds remaining. Are we looking at Team Empire running the same kind of aggressive dueling um, that remain. they did last time? It was the Dark Seer Earth Spirit last time around that was very successful. This there's like around, nothing there's like, like that though. Reserve time. <laughs> no, I, I don't think so. I think they they need to go safe lane this time around, mm -hmm. especially with the, with the threat of Chen coming out. It's way, they make it way too easy for for them if they if they do play on the off lane. Yeah. This time around, Team Secret, they opt to go for the Tidehunter. The Nyx Assassin worked out really... or It didn't work out, but the idea behind it was that he scouts things out for the relocate, good burst damage, good pick in case uh, you want to block off the uh, the Nyx pick from the enemy team because you have an OD on your team, but Tidehunter, a more reliable option for team fights. Those are the second of the heroes I was thinking of when I asked you whether the Nyx Assassin should have been replaced by something else. Yeah. I didn't think Darkseer would, would quite do the trick if they'd gotten it instead of... Empire, but whereas I think Tidehunter, still a strong hero that can go in front line and everything and still set up the team fight for them where they will allow the uh, the OD to, to get a, a sufficient amount of damage output. Really what they needed in a lot of these early, early or mid game team fights in the last game. So Yeah, but at the same time, like there, there's a downside to Tidehunter just because of the long cooldown on the Ravage and you want to be able to set things up sooner with the relocate. and. He's uh, not a threat around. Yeah, them. and also it's just he's not going to be as mobile as say Nyx Assassin because you want the idea behind it was strong where they want the Nyx to kind of scout things out and look for fights for them, whereas the Tidehunter doesn't really serve that same purpose. If they were going to do that, then they would have to change more in their core strategy. Like they would have had to swap out one of the two supports. A lot more sustain coming from this lineup for Team Secret with the Chen and Tidehunter. Both of them are mech heroes, but we can probably say, agree that there's going to be a lot of sustain here. Team Secret might be able to put a lot of pressure down, but Team Empire go for the Enchantress. It's actually interesting. It's almost as if Poppy forced their hand into this Enchantress pick with that Dacia ban. Mm -hmm. And that normally you, you wouldn't see... I, don't, I think he's the only Chen player in the world that would force the enemy to pick Enchantress against him. I would hate to play against it. I'm sure Aki would too. Playing uh, Enchantress against the Chen? Or playing the, the Chen against the Enchantress. Yeah, Five playing the Chen against the Enchantress remaining. sucks. Exactly. But, but, in, but Puppy's in this particular, that good. Yeah. yeah, in this particular draft, it does seem as if Puppy wants them. There is another team. Uh, this is something that was routine for Ice Ice Ice, is that they would routinely actually, in the Chinese qualifier, one of these tournaments, they would pick up Chen into the Enchantress. But that's the only other team I've ever seen that out of. I think she's a very uh, debatable hero these days. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of teams think she's absolutely useless, whereas a lot of other teams think she's one of the strongest heroes. I, th I sure meta. Like, personally, I think she's still she's really good. Like, uh, if you run her as a four position, it's hard to take her down. Uh, the two creeps that you're able to pick up, a lot of kill potential there. She scales pretty decently. I think the problem is when she doesn't scale. Like, playing from behind with her... Yeah, it does kind of suck, but... And it's a risky take. Then again, Chen is sort of the same thing. Playing from behind with the Chen, it's no fun either. The Jug would have been really good. If you're looking at uh, the options that Secret had left over, it would have worked well against the Doom too. Yeah, they just don't have enough burst damage, right? So the, the constant heals... Yeah, the healing ward would have been really nice for them. You think they dare pick up the Ember Spirit against into the Doom Brain? Mm. I think they're... They have Ursa as an option. Slark, Slark. I guess. I think this is a much more well-rounded lineup by uh, Team Secret than compared to last. They can actually fight them at any point in, point in time in this game. Yeah, I think so too. And this is the combination that they used quite often at Shanghai when they had the Lion plus the Slark, just because the Slark can eventually rotate around the map, and because he, uh, because of his ultimate, he just moves around really quickly, enables the Lion to get some of his own space. So one, one thing that stands out, out for, to me in this draft is that Team Empire went for the Vengeful Spirit instead of the Lion pick, because she's generally a better hero playing up against the Chen. Lion sort of struggles because he has to run through the creeps, and mm -hmm. he, he doesn't want 
going to commit any of his spells to the creeps, obviously. So so that's a problem for him. Whereas the Vengeful Spirit is, is pretty good again. We can stay armor on everything. And then because Poppy gets this Lion pick up, Five that's probably where he decides in his mind enchantment is no longer a problem for me. We can easily deal with her. Mm -hmm. They have that burst damage, they have the control through the through the disables and so forth. Yeah, and they get another hero that's pretty good. Not the best carry in the world against Enchantress, but it does at least provide some yeah, disable and okay. some magic damage of its own with the Slark. Yeah, and so Poppy isn't gonna go for the something. hood, so he's gonna have a much earlier BKB this game. So the untouchable from the Enchantress isn't really an issue. Once again, the early wards being placed out. Pylai die. This boots. TP's out, manages to get himself a river where they should be able to see anything that Afterlife does from here on out. I think they're going to have a big problem dealing with the uh, with Slark as the game progresses. Hey, you always have Doom, and Doom is one of those like fail-safe options. You just Doom a Slark. You can get him out of the fight. If you can get on top of him and prevent him from just walking around and regening off his ultimate too. But then you still have to burst down the, uh, the OD, which you will then have a problem doing. Yeah, I'm just saying they have options to to deal with all these heroes. The like spec plus the the Doom works out okay too. As soon as Doom finds a target with his Doom, then spec just haunts in. It's a really quick one too. I do think Secret's lineup though, in this game, overall is a lot more balanced than it was in the last one. Would you be, if if um, if you were the captain of the team, which which lineup would you prefer having? Uh, I mean, it depends just because of the players that they have. I think both both lineups look okay from my vantage point. I think Secret might have a slight advantage, but not by too much. So once again, we are going to have our mid match off scandal playing the puck up against our tours OD. Anticipating that this time around, Scandal will have a bit more support in that mid lane, whether it's a simple like, tornado, tornado creep from Aposhka, or maybe a full-on smoke gank into the mid lane. I'm anticipating them not to actually leave Scandal alone in this lane. Yeah, that guy owned last game, Aposhka. Oh, yeah, 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 he really did. I haven't been able to see a lot of his games, but especially in that last game, he cre uh, created so much base for his team. Meanwhile, Afterlife. Starting off with the Infernal Blade, not actually going for the Devour. It doesn't actually have uh, a hard camp here to work off of. Feels like the Infernal Blade is better harassment damage against the support. That actually did so much damage. Mm -hmm. That ability just allows them to trade early. The one downside, though, is that if you're going to go for the Devour at level 2, it's going to leave you somewhat susceptible as you won't have the uh, Scorched Earth. Right. Do you think he potentially skips Devour? No. No. At level 2, I mean. Uh, not entirely. I still think there's reason to get it, just because the the sooner you get it, the thing the is, I, I think he can get, get a kill on the line. If there's no chain support, I think he can get that kill on the line. I don't think with the slark available, like pilot, I should be fine. The trading hits is okay for him too. The thing is, this this infernal blade level one, it's it only is worth the pickup here if he's actually able to force line back enough that he's able to get experience. But this isn't working out. Pilot dies just consuming tangos and fighting. Yeah, that lag of armor really punishes him as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the benefit too of uh, the support uh, Chen, who bought almost everything, allows Pilot die to get the boots first, and this is what is enabling him to trade hits more than anything. The universe trying to put a stop to um, Poshka getting into his offlane camp but not much he can do. So we'll be able to secure the two-minute rune at top, and Doom not really doing too much in this bottom lane so far as he's being zoned out by Pi. We'll have to go for the bottom rune, picks up himself up a bounty. Finally has that level two, and we'll see what he does with it here. Very surprised he still hasn't gone back to that offlane camp, which is, has been opened up for him for quite some time. Yeah. And with the dual lane, because it is a dual lane, I think that Afterlife is trying to take more advantage of this, but mm -hmm. would benefit him to at least have one of the creeps available. You could just roll the dice and see if you can get something really good too. So he actually went for the uh, Scorched Earth. For the Scorched Earth. Mm -hmm. I think he was hoping that Pilot Eye would man up and take the fight there. Because but even then, he knows that Pilot Eye has boots already. Yeah, yeah. yeah the better play, when he was this low, the better play would have been getting Devour and going back to his camp. Take Earth comes in, misses out, and they're actually going to try <laughs> turn around imprisoning up that uh, Wild Wing Ripper and stopping the tornado. Would have been an obnoxious presence, so Artidius says it's well worth to spend a little bit of extra HP and mana to take that one out of the pool. 
they try to make the movement, but I mean, OD is really hard to kill. Yeah. Like, there's almost no chance that they and get a kill on a hero like that, especially with just the puck. Puppy's keeping a constant presence, pretty much sticking between these two camps farming and getting new creeps and knows that he doesn't actually need to rotate into the bottom lane too much with afterlife already being zoned out for the most part if anything he invades in the top mm -hmm. try to help the tide hunter along too there's some kill potential to be had on the specter but you're gonna need some levels first on a few of these heroes before you can do anything at the same time i think enchanters rotating bottom possibly through a smoke gang would would net them a kill on the line, definitely, and yeah. create a lot of space for the Doom. And there's our first blood. Doom ends up going down as Pylai dies, sets it up for Eternity to be able to come in, and that Scorched Earth is just not enough regeneration there for Afterlife to live. Was that Vengeful Spirit starting his TP and cancelling it again? I, I think believe so. so. Poshka, runner for the Haste Rune, will be able to pick it up just ahead of Team Secret. But again, not much is really going to come of this, at least Maposhka. Well, he's got an inch chance. He could try and steal Puppy's Creep, but... Wouldn't do too much for him. Stun comes out, able to run ahead of the Impale. Enchantress will actually have one of her creeps stolen with that Centaur taken away. Meanwhile, top lane, Universe drops a bit low. Ramses as well as King R as their lane was pushing in, trying to put some pressure on Universe. Hopefully forcing him away from the experience. Not going to happen here. Universe healing Salves himself away and is good to go with that Iron Talon, the extra farm. will be coming in for him. Afterlife is going to be gone on once again in this bottom lane, but this time in a much more comfortable position with the Enchantress creep, as well as Enchantress herself locking in Eternal Heavy. They're actually going to be able to get this one. He still has the pounce up, but he's hoping to be able to just get into the trees all the way through. Has to loop himself around this dangerous point. Afterlife is going to be able to get one feeling. step ahead of him and blocks Eternal Heavy and the in. And finally, Empire claimed the kill, evening out the score now one to one. I don't even, I don't think Afterlife even expected that to happen. You saw him going back to lane trying to take lessons, and Enchantress was being adamant about going for the kill. Once she, she was just patient with the clap. She knew when she hit that though. I think she with missed this it one. actually. No, I think she got it. She faked it out twice. I thought, for, I'm pretty sure she hit it, but regardless, uh, without his ultimate available, all that juking doesn't really do anything for the Slark. I thought he could pounce out of it. I think that's what Afterlife thought as well. Yeah, it just did a good job of keeping on top of him at all times. So after, is this in response to essentially the mid, mid ganks kind of failing with the Chen constantly there and Afterlife having issues that they now make this sort of a dual lane scenario at bottom? Yeah, and they're going to force the movement from from Puppy as well. He needs to either put a lot of pressure on the top lane where this isn't happening or go down and, and match the aggression. Yeah, with this bottom creep. He's going to steal it for himself, but of course it does fade. I like this idea that King R rotates mid as they force the attention of Puppy down to bottom lane. Unfortunately, it doesn't work out for them. Afterlife does end up going down. It's just but... too much to say for all, keeping in place with the pounce of the I'll try and catch our tour. They have the sounds. They're going to follow up with Ramses entering in with his ultimate. Well, Poshka and the double damage is just the icing on the cake. Yes, Afterlife did go down to the bottom lane, but the much bigger kill on our tour is claimed by Empire. Yeah, that was really well set up by them. Just because, again, the Dream Quo plus the Haunt combination, and usually you don't want to use that for a non-core target, but especially the OD with how well he's doing, and he wasn't getting pressured at all. It was a good kill for them. And I think Arteezy was actually a little bit out of position there. There's yeah, no way that anybody much, could rotate in. No room control and river control from, uh, from Secret. We saw this with the earlier room pickup as well, so it's not surprising that they would get that gang off. They didn't even need the the haunt. Scandal may still need some extra. I like the fact that he went uh, level two waning with as well. I think that was probably part of the calculation there from our tour, assuming that he would be able to get off an imprisonment on himself. But not actually the case there with the extra level in the waning rift. I think I think the hunt though it was fine. You want to make sure that you kill targets with OD. Yeah, and you participate and get get some golden experience is fine. Yeah. I'm curious to see what uh, Puppy's next move is. Yeah, this his team lost two heroes in a short period of time, and uh, this Tide Hunter, he's against the dual lane. So like you said, he wants to try to put pressure, but with just the wand and the Iron Talon, going to focus a little bit more on his own farm. The thing is, that he's playing the Chen as a five, and has committed. A lot of his spell usage to taking over Enchantress creeps or for a, a, a Wilkin Reaper in, in the river in the middle lane to, to harass with that tornado. Yeah. 
essentially trying to counter what Enchantress brings. Yeah, so he's not going to have that same uh, item progression that we are used to seeing from Chins. But Pylai Dai may still be able to have better progression in that sort of four position. Is already level five. The Slark spending some time in the jungle here, thanks to that regenerative level six that he has. Pylai Dai will get his level six of his own quite soon. Spectre ultimate going out here. Looks like they're going to go for Pylai Dai. Manage to catch him and trap him inside the net. And Ramsey should be able to get this kill. Or maybe not. The Chen Heal goes out. They're going to have to dive in deeper into the tower. Yes, they get the support kill, but will it be worth it for them? They have to be able to escape, and Universe's TP is just not fast enough, nor does he have his level 6. It would have been needed to punish Team Empire. Really good rotation again. It just seems like uh, Team Empire, they really know how to use this Spectre hunt. Uh, to full use in a mid. Nice read by Scandal. That was a really Managing. good attempt. It was really well played by Scandal as well. Yeah. It's Starting with stun, gets the orb out. It's really hard to lock down a puck like that though. Mm -hmm. They don't have any hard disables there. Pylai Dai not wanting to give up this tier 1 tower in the top lane for totally free. It's going to be rotating up there. Putting a stop to Moposhka's push. I do like, by the way, uh, I was just thinking about it in my own head. Like the situation where Secret does that switch, right? We talked about how they did it often at Shanghai. Mm -hmm. And we can already tell that Empire studied a lot of these games already. And something that we noticed is, so the Lion rotates as Eternal Envy goes to the jungle. And I was wondering, is it worth it for uh, Empire to just, or any team to set up on Pylai Dai at situation and just slow down his momentum before he can just like pick up free levels I and they immediately do that. yeah because he was left alone so many times in that tournament yeah you take away the uh the faster level so you take away any blink timing because if they just ignored him you know he would have had a fairly early blink yeah and he gets the early level six which is most important and then he can really pressure the specter that smoke gank is not going to work out. They just tried to kind of run at Scandal and catch him by surprise with the quick hex, but Secret don't really get their opening. They do know that the Spectre is obviously getting a lot of space here in their own safe lane, but Spectre Ultimate's going to go down. Doesn't look like it's a result in much team to retreat away from that mid lane. I think it was for scouting purposes, finding out where the, where the Titan, the Chen was. Yeah, they're looking for an opportunity too with their Doom. It's just a little off mark though, but... Do you expect both teams to put a really high premium in defending their mid-tower once again, like the way we saw game number one unfold? Oh yeah, definitely. For the first 20 minutes, that's gonna be where all the fights are gonna... gonna go. I think there's a bit of a power spike right now for Team Secret because they have the, uh, the Arcane boots up, so they can... Oh, good kill coming in here. They know Ramses doesn't have a quick escape with that ultimate, so he may be caught. He's trying to get into the trees, but he still has to deal with the pounce, and there's just too many disables. Taken out, Pylite die. Not waiting a second there. Throws that finger at death. Oh, oh net! Afterlife! He got the courier in hand. And that is a big time courier. That was actually the uh, drums there for Eternal Envy and still a rope for, uh, for our OD as well. That's good. Yeah. I was surprised that Ramses was so far at bottom. Yeah, he had known. this false sense of security after sc uh, scouting out the, uh, yeah, exactly. the Radiant Lion. Mid tower just gonna get poked at in a much more reasonable timing for the blink dagger now on this puck than it was in the last game. Team Secret. Perhaps going for a sandwich on this mid lane. They're wrapping around both sides here, but Scandal. He's just pushing out the wave time and time again. Orb silence. Head back to Fountain. Fill up. Rinse and repeat. So the item timings on uh on Empire is actually better than it was last game. Despite the fact that I think Secret is fighting better this time. Yeah, this is a way faster blink for Scandal. Yeah, the last game it was like 20 minutes, but he got pressured quite often. Mm -hmm. This game had a much easier time against the OD. was able to make good adjustments and most importantly, he had a lot of support from his team overall. Scandal this time is not here to be able to push out this mid lane. They went for a bottom lane tier 2 TP in smoke They're gonna wrap through radiant jungle But part of the problem uh, that this is and I think that this phrase describes it really well that you you have Blitz where it's this low percentage gank whenever you're dealing with a slark It's one of those slippery carries right? They're yeah. not guaranteed to kill when you smoke gank him 
think and it's a good move just because they want to be able to knock on this bottom tier one tower. Off immediately. Yeah, after life, he needs to be able that to Doom here. Oh no, the pounce and immediately the ultimate goes down from Eternal Levy. He may still be caught though, the foil, as well as, yeah, they're just throwing everything they have. They want to make sure that this kill is guaranteed, and they're going to give it to Ramses as well. Claims the last hit to speed up the progression of his farm. I think Secret is playing this a bit too defensively, too careful. They have the Rabbit still, they haven't used it a single time in this game still. They had the uh, the Hand of God up as well. I think they could have forced the issue and tried to push down the tower. Maybe they're respecting the the combination of Pocket and Enchantress as counters to the Chen. It's not just that, right it's hard though. When you go for the straight up push against a, a hero like Puck, he's just going to keep orbing down waves. And Secret, they don't have heroes that necessarily just want to show immediately, especially when Doom is up. Like, you can't just beat on the tower with the OD and the Sark. It's really easy to get opened up on with Haunt plus the, um, plus the coil. Yeah, they're gonna make the make most now, though, by taking down that tier 1 tower. And then Empire's response is really good. I really like this. Yeah, going for the Roshan. It's certainly under the game. Now you bring in Mikoka, let him tank some hits. This is the classic trait, though. When you play Dire, you're gonna lose that top tier 1 tower. They're gonna lose tier 2, two, two, tier two yeah. as well because of the long cooldowns on the ultimates. That's okay though. Getting the Roshan here is a really good play. I like that uh, Team Secret are still keeping themselves, keeping their farm. You know, with the, the mid lane here from Artur, as long as he doesn't get caught out by a rotation, which shouldn't happen as the Roshan does end up going down. Eternal Levy still at the bottom lane, farming up there. And Team Secret well, they may not be able to get this tier 2 as the rotations are coming from Empire, but they've at least done a lot of damage no matter what happens here. Looks like Empire just not going to be able to get there fast enough. They're going to get the TP in. The tier 2 already dead, though, and Afterlife comes in, but he doesn't have his actual Doom. So he tries to go for Universe. The universe is just going to be sent back and tries to zone out the rest of Empire while Puppy gets the free escape. Yeah, even without a TP, he's able to make it out, and uh, the Sodi's just been hitting the tower for free. It's just going to be a free one there. Is I think that's a, it's a very costly trade at this point. Three towers and complete free farm for both OD and Slark for the duration of the Rose attempt. At this point in time, I don't think that's worth it. At the very least, attempting to save the tier two and leaving that mid lane open. Yeah, exactly. For that's, that's probably where the, the real mistake lies. Mm -hmm. Real mistake lies. Yeah, they decided to go for that top one, but Secret already kind of clued into that fact, and we're already getting out this time the attempt came. Good farm, so farm on both sides, though. Yeah. Man, drums is a hell of an item, isn't it? Colonel Lendy, Artur, both have drums. We're going to have Afterlife, Ramses, and Maposhka. I'm sure this is just going to be a basic bracer. I'm not sure if you need a third drums on your team. Maybe just aim, aiming for a little bit of tankiness and then into that. Uh, that would be if it makes more sense to just get the dragon lens. Mm -hmm. yeah. Again, another rotation oh, in. They're going to get the tour on. immediately. They just know how to deal with an OD. They target him down first, getting the initiation time after time. And now, start focusing on the tier one. Who cares about uh, backdoor protection? There is none for tier one. Bit of a waste of hand of God as well. Mm -hmm. So, Empire, no, they just forced quite a lot out of secret with uh, another successful rotation. Does seem like, uh, excluding that rotation up to tier two, it does seem like Empire's rotations have been a lot more effective in this game. Yeah, it's just because this Puck plus uh, Spectre combination, whenever you can leave with the Dream Coil or with the Doom and the Haunt just comes in, more than anything, like the common theme throughout both those games is they're able to just abuse around their Haunt. Like, they're always making sure that they're finding something around the map whenever Haunt comes off cooldown. While all these objectives are, are taking place, though, we have Eternal Envy free farming on the Slark. That is kind of the saving grace for, for Team Secret in this game. Is he going to be farming fast enough, though? He's at 7,700 in net worth, not too far ahead of this Spectre. Yeah, we already know that Spectre doesn't need that much uh, net worth to be able to be really effective. And you've got the Dragonlance completed now on the Enchantress too, beefing up some of her damage as well. Smoke out from Secret. They see Scandal, but they don't want him. They know this is... Oh, Scandal actually blinking forward, going for the Creep Wave. It's actually now in a bad position, as he's going to be slowed down by the Gust. Doesn't have vision for another one. Pops it there, but it's just not going to last long enough for him to be able to get the blink out. Almost getting saved there by King R, but the Finger of Death ensures the kill and Team Secret, this time punishing Team Empire, going in, getting the two kills. Despite being called out, Scandal's spell usage is actually impressive. Mm -hmm. Like, the way he almost survived through that, through the, the use of his ultimate, was pretty good. Yeah, it was just rough timing. He uh, 
the secret wars pinging out there like we don't want to go for this puck it's too hard to kill anyways at that point it's just a luck game right whether or not uh the scandal's looking because if he is then my life dies no shot Boshka, is he out of position afterlife responds with the doom onto our tour with ramsey's having the double damage this is exactly maybe a fight that they want to be able to take a send back not going to be there in time as it looks like our tour is going to be blown up before that happens looks like they actually sent back the slark instead the universe he has the Ravage. Obviously, no need to pop it here. He knows he's dead anyway. Empire just looking for as many kills as possible. With the Ether Lens, they actually managed to get the swap on a Fiat's glove that turns into a double kill for Ramses. The double damage definitely making that team fight for Empire. I did not see that fight go that way. When, when he initially popped the Doom, I thought, oh, that's a big, my friend. But Universe is just not the Universe we usually see. He, he, he hasn't used the Ravage this game yet, has he? I think this fight particularly was one of the most important parts of the game where he needed to commit that Ravage, either to save Tour, who probably would have lived had he used it, and Universe would have lived as well, and as a result of that, Poppy too. So he could have spared three deaths. Yeah, they wouldn't have gotten any kills out of it, but he could have at least spared the death. But even before then, I think he should have gone in, been in position to, to Ravage under the tower, and, and made that fight much easier for... Uh, for secret, because Eternal Envy was on the on the front line hitting them. I think part of the problem right there is that if your OD's doomed up like that, he can't put out any damage, and they don't have any follow up to the Tide Ravage. I sort of agree in that uh, they do need to get some Ravage off. There's still significant damage in both Slark and Tide themselves, though, and a Lion to boot, and they have the mechanism, so they actually had a decent amount of HP to to juggle around with. Yeah, now they're in a pretty rough spot, though. Like the Doom's got drums, flats. Uh, he's been Afterlife has been pretty on point so far with how he's been positioning himself to be able to get one of the two cores at all times. And the Spectre's almost about to complete the Manta too. Manta style up for Eternal Envy, so he doesn't have to worry about the uh, the puck blinking in silence as much. Now that he can get rid of that, there's still going to be Afterlife, who's the scary guy with the uh, the Doom, but Quick Fingers should still solve that problem for Eternal Envy. Maposhka, he's reaching this really big peak now. He's got the Dragonlance. He has level two impetus as well. Point booster pretty short to the follow. Mm -hmm. He's done a pretty good job of keeping up even as a support. Not really a true uh, support, just because he's been using a lot of this time to farm. But Team Secret, they've got the Blink Dagger now completed on the Tide. Well, I mean, uh, if any time's a strike, it's got to be now for a secret with this blink. Yeah, well, even then, I think with the item progression that they have right now, I still think they're in an equally good spot to Empire. I don't think it's as far off, even though this team fight was pretty disastrous from them. I still think it's sort of 50-50, depending on the uh, initiate. Chen is still a, a lot of heal, so as long as the, all the ultimates are for, for team secret, I think they can easily fight up against. It is annoying that the OD is going to be doomed in every team fight. But that is going to allow a lot of space for Eternal Envy. Hey, it's two things. One, it's if you get the Ravage off uh, to start the fight. Or yeah, you might blow up the Doom initiation. beforehand as well, yeah. Yeah. But if you can get the Doom off on a key target, even the Tide himself, and Doom being really good against Tide just because you can't crack it at all. It's you a good can prevent the, yeah, if you can prevent the Tide from getting anything off. Still really good ways to win the fight. Four Team Secret. It's just right now when it comes to farm, for example, it's going to be easier for... Uh, the Spectre to just get on top of the two supports from Secret, blow them up. I guess Pylai dies not in the worst position just because uh, you can manage and start killing illusions, but... Again, they have sufficient heal on them. I don't think they're that, that worried about the uh, Spectre yet. And with the blink on the, the, the Tidehawk... Probably not. I think I, I even favor Team Secret's team fight right now. Yeah, what matters is Doom. Like, how the Doom starts the fight will determine a lot of this. It's gonna be some chaotic fights between Gen Creeps, Spectral Illusions, Ravage, and Doom. These trip blinks. Team Secret have yet to find a team fight that they could really capitalize off of. Maposhka off by himself here while the rest of Empire. Three or four manning behind Ramses. Afterlife showing himself. They may just be going for a straight out tier one push. Team Secret don't look too eager to be able to respond. Giving up a tier one offlane, not that big of a deal anyways. Looks like they don't want to commit too hard for this anyways. They are going to send uh, Pylite Day up here just to sit around this area, see if he can find something. 
But no real opportunities to be had. The Spectre gonna go for the Defusal Blade next. It's a big deal in, in the fact that it's got a hint of their map movement a lot. They're gonna have a much harder time reacting to the top part of the map. And they have a pretty slow lineup to move around with. They can't really help out the Slark as much. Still no Balloon yet, on them. That'll be the uh, good timing for Empire. Because more than anything, they need to get this Doom off. Mm. Yeah, he's gonna have it first. Yeah, there are a lot of good targets this game. The OD, the Slark, the Tidehunter. You just have to make sure that you don't get blown up uh, or get caught up by something like the Ravage and the Lion. From how the game has been played out so far, I think he's... Until they start realizing that the Dooming off the Tidehunter is gonna prove a win for them in, in, in the team fight, I still think he's gonna commit it to the, to the OD if it's a straight up fight. Secret. Gotta get the lead out. And Roshan is dropping relatively fast, and they have to be able to contest this one. There is no trade-offs here. Snow taking towers. They need to be able to get their hands on the Aegis, or at least be able to win this team fight. The Ravage goes out, but the Aegis is already picked up by Ramsey. They've blown up Mabushka, though, and they still have three heroes trapped inside the Roshan pit. And if I start making their way out, they go straight for Artori. Drops the ultimate, the swap back in. King R looking for the stun, but can't finish anybody off as Artori is able to get the blink himself away. Puppy instead is going to be the target by Ramsey. Should end up going down, but the follow up is all on Eternal Envy. They've already got the Doom on him. They just need to be able to get some disables and damage to finish him off, but the Doom, it's wearing out. Eternal Envy, he's going to be able to get a blink away quite soon as the Manson is out to be able to get rid of that silence. The orb misses. They follow up some extra damage, but Eternal Envy finally gets into the trees and starts that regenerative effect. And now Artur, he managed to survive through that whole entire fight and is looking to be able to play more. Blinks himself out from the impetus shot. Pile Eye helps with the save. He's going to be able to get Scandal. That's a drop gem. Artur picks it up, but he may actually end up going down anyway as the enemy team reclaims that gem. Trying to just retreat now with that as Maposhka is going to be the sacrificial lamb stuck inside of this pounce. Turns to try and help kill the lion. Don't think that's going to be happening though. It's Maposhka. Oh, dodges the pound, sidesteps that one. Maposhka, he's actually going to be able to get away here. King R with a swap, barely. No, oh, he swaps his turtle Levy out. They go for the kill on Pylite Die. Wow. What a setup there from King R. Oh, that was so sick. Well played by Empire. And the turtle Levy should just be able to blink himself out. Oh, God, that was closer than I anticipated. Afterlife almost got that one off. If the Inferno Blade hits there and they get a turtle Levy, Empire. They would have been screaming with joy. But Remember still. how I said chaotic team fights? Yeah. That was all over the place. I mean, oh, yeah. the Doom was looking for whatever he could. He finally finds the Sark at the last second. EE does a really good job of kind of just uh, running around, but hey, Empire is going pretty ham. They're just running at uh, Secret right now, and Secret are kind of hard pressed to do anything. Like, they've got the uh, they've got the heals, but they don't really have anything else that can really turn the fight. They, they did commit the Ravage to uh, fight back in Aegis for this fight, though. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they, and they didn't get Black Kill. You're gonna get the Diffusal now, though. Onto Ramses. There was actually a dieback from Scandal. Wasn't it? Uh, was it? No, no, no. It wasn't Scandal that popped back. Oh, it was it the oh. She, He was the one who got blown up first by the, uh, by the Lion's initiation. But that definitely played a, a key point, right? Because I felt like their um, their focus on the Enchantress did mean that the Ravage, it did hit a significant number of heroes, but there wasn't very much follow-up to They that. had to blow the finger for that too, right? Yeah. They, they made sure that that Enchantress went down, but mm -hmm. you're right. All right, so... And because that, that's up? a big catch, right? You are talking about how Empire just kind of running around in these fights. It's a good Ravage setup for Universe, though, because Haunt went off, but he still got the blink through. Jump in Inferno Blade on Pylite Die, Jesus. <laughs> Look at the damage he's taken. He should be going down. Let's just send back here to swap back in Pylite Die. Oh, man, get it sent out there as Universe provides a save with Ravage. That's still going to be some significant ultimates used to be able to save the support. Ramses has blown an ultimate of his own and should be able to track down Universe quite easily. I think the better kill to get in this particular case. Good, good play by Puppy using Hog of War to TP out immediately after sending sending back Pylite Die. Yeah, I think if Scandal didn't hesitate there, he would have gone both on the Dream Coil. Yeah, maybe they would have been able to isolate some heroes out, but again... It's a hard play to make when yeah. you don't have the vision and you just know their general area. Empire, once again, though, they're going for any play they can as soon as the uh, Spectre Haunt is up. They realize this is their time to play aggressively. The OD isn't at uh, that huge culmination point where he's just got a lot of farm and he can go off on them. But I, I like how they are taking it to secret side, side of the map now. Even without the Aegis. While still preventing uh, an opening for, say, Eternal Levy to be able to take that tier 1 bottom. Scandal, rotate there. They're leaving Artur alone at the top lane, where he's been bouncing back and forth between lane pushing and jungle. But this is essentially all he can do when Secret have already lost the fight at mid. 
just continuing to get farm now on the two. Maybe even goes for something like the Shiva so he can slow down EE, yeah. chase him down. And again, again what the, the puck. Uh, one of the supports picking up the gem for Scandal to run around with. Last time it was Mokoshka. Uh, this time, obviously, he still needs his Zags. So King R is able to get the gem for the team. And Doom is going to be picked off here. Jump by Team Secret. A pick. That will mean something small for Secret, but they're still going to need a lot more if they want to be able to claim control of this game back from Empire. Yeah, really easy kill for them to nab. I don't think he should have been there to begin with. I think what, what they wanted to establish now what was pushing this tier 2 objective on the bottom lane. So regardless of how he was going to make his way down there, it would have taken him too long. Yeah. They have the Spectre ultimate too. It fit in line with their put in bomb if only they had the Doom ready to go. Exactly. The Spectre should have been the one farming up the Dire Jungle. And then once the team fight broke out... I they think... probably just didn't anticipate Secret to get aggressive without Ravage. Good for them though, they got Gem back. Or yeah. kept it intact. That great swap from... You know. Yeah, it's making... Uh... Team Secret play pretty scared. They've got their words words currently located on the uh, the left hand side of this map. Even got an aggressive ward inside the Radiant Jungle, knowing that they can't really play around. Uh, or excuse me, the Dire Jungle, knowing that they can't really play around their own jungle at this point. See the line being drawn by our tour. This is all owned by Empire. This is Empire Land State. They're going to be able to get more. They've got Puppy. They're going to dive into the tier two almost at this oh, point. Oh, no! Universe! Oh, fails the Ravage entirely, still tries to make the initiation, but Artur, I don't think he can really back him up here, managed to get the imprisonment, but that means he doesn't have an imprisonment to save himself, Artur ends up going down, and Universe is still stranded in the middle of an Empire Wasteland, three end up going down, and the Dagger searching for more, but Empire... <laughs> Blowing a Ravage like that really just blows the mid-game into a disaster of a game, this is gonna mean so much for Empire, they're gonna be able to take, they're probably not gonna hit base, right? There's no Ravage up without Ravage available. They know the Team Secret, they also don't have the Chen Ultimate. They committed a lot to try to take that fight. Maybe try to find something out of it. And Ramses, he doesn't have the Aegis or anything like that, and they might not have the best tower pushing, but they can easily cut through this with 28 seconds left on the OD. The Tide, even if he comes back to life, isn't going to be able to provide too much. Lincoln, you'll swap Highlight Die. Again, the setback, but it's just too damn fast. Empire blow him up, and now they're going to be able to get this melee Rax. They've actually Empire. gotten so much out of these swaps they throughout are. this game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're so rich now too, with the tier 3 tower being taken. It's gonna mean the melee and the rain tracks. Pretty rare to be able to take both that of those That Chen wouldn't even have mattered that much. Like, they should have just... They committed so much for a Chen, he stayed al alive for a long time. <laughs> they couldn't have followed up with anything afterwards. Turn on NBA top, just gonna get poked at. And <laughs> oh, nicely forward there from Afterlife. Blocking the pounds, not that it means much as he still does not have the Doom to be able to st put a stop to that. He's got gold, though. Yeah, he's got that Enchantress in the bank. Finishes the Agix. You've got a BKB on the Doom. Everybody just starts filtering in items. They've got tons of damage coming out of everywhere. And Secret are honestly just one misstep away from being double raxed. Spectra is closing in on uh, the Radiance. If it is a Radiance he's going for again. Seems like it will be once his well for now. Dagger's back up. Got himself stranded in the trees. Looks like they're going for our tour. They do have the Spectre Ultimate. They're gonna be willing to blow this one. King gonna the hot. follow up initiation with the Clever Cape. The scandal's already jumped in, and it's so easy to get the kill on an OD if you have the initiation like Empire does, and this is well in time then to take control of the Roshan pit too. It's up in just 20 seconds. Oh, it's a BKP once again for them, but I just I mean, my favorite thing so far with how Empire plays is it's just good play. Yeah. They're doing all the little things right. Whenever the haunt is available, they're looking and searching for uh, kills around the map. They're setting things up. They're being aggressive. They're not ever letting Secret just kind of get back into this farming group. And throughout these two games, they've only done wrong, one wrongful map read, read, which was the Doom getting caught out by Team Secret in this one. I don't think they've done a misstep outside of that one. Yeah. Uh, both these games so far, that damage by that Enchantress, you have to respect it now. Poor Puppy. Already down to half HP before the fight has even begun. And is it going to begin at all? 
Eternal Levy is actually searching, what, for the Courier? He's going to try and cut the creep wave, but Empire have more than enough creeps here to be able to uh, take this full lane. I mean, that's how desperate you are at this yeah. point. You commit drums for your slash, just chase this Courier across the map. They've got the Ravage. Yeah, made it. Man, he's he's fine with this one. There goes the Ravage. Man, it's only catch two, though, with Empire. They were still sitting far enough that back that most of them don't get caught. They get the coil. Silence on the two. Imprisonment is going to be able to find in time for Universe, but it doesn't really matter. He's already made his initiation. Now Eternal Levy is going to be caught. They're doomed. They got through the Lincolns, trying to throw enough damage, and they've got it, too. The Impotent shots more than enough. Artur, he blew up a couple there with the ultimate, but now he's going to be forced away and falls almost taken out by Maposhka with that heavy set of damage. Empire, though, I love the fact that they're playing this really disciplined. They don't overextend themselves. They did, take that melee rack. Did they get the gem on the return as well? I don't think they did. No, they, uh, they lost the gem. Still there. They just immediately buy a new one, though, because they want to continue to deny yeah. Ward Vision, and I... Obviously, well worth it. Uh, these are yeah, these early gem pickups. I think this is uh, very well going to the two and O. A lot of people expected, just not to the team they expected it to go to. Hey, Empire is playing really well right now. I mean, for sure, a lot of people, well. including myself, uh, had some doubts. I mean, you would have been crazy not to. Team Secret, a lot of fanfare behind them, but they are just getting dismantled right now. Look at Maposhka, My goodness. This the best thing about this is him. you can't ignore this hero anymore. Mm -hmm. like he does too much damage for you to kind of just say, okay, well, we'll deal with him last. But this is, for all intents and purposes, a core. The thing is, who's gonna kill him outside of the lion? Don't have they've, got a, they've got a burst damage, and uh, I guess the benefit is that the OD still has good attack speed from both the orchid and the drums, but would have really benefited from maybe a BKB of his own. That's absolutely needed. And what's also needed here is that Team Secret defend this Roshan. They cannot That's give up cheese. Aegis and Cheese. They have to find their initiation somehow without their big team fight items and without their big team fight ults. But it just Still seems no impossible. 40 seconds. Our Levy jumping in, trying to grab something. Oh, doesn't manage to get anything there. The Aegis and Cheese already picked up, and now he's being body blocked entirely. Team Secret are going to leave Eternal Levy behind, knowing that there was nothing they could do there. Now they're going to pop the Spectre Ultimate, looking for more. Ramsey's going to be hexed up. A pile I die. That hex lasts long enough for him to be able to complete the TP out. So he drops the gem, tries to just make some YOLO play because he realizes the type of position that his team is in. I know a lot of people are going to say that was unnecessary, but. He just thought, okay, I have to go for this. My team is in such a bad spot. With 70 seconds down and the Aegis available, it looks like Empire, they just want to end this game. Yeah, go for this swap out. Take off on Poppy. The Ravage goes in, hits on five, but again, where's the damage, damage, damage? They have no Eternal Levy. Artur's already been stalled up. They're going for a scandal here, trying to get him. But Artur, he dies before that's even possible. And now he's going to buy back, but what hope does he have? They call it TD Crit. They go down in their very first series. Revealing the team, showing what big names they are, but going down to Team Empire. The young up-and-comers from the CIS region, unbelievable. They played amazing throughout. I think game one especially was definitely Empire winning through sheer strength, right? I think this game though, there were so many mistakes done by Team Secret that you could say that, you know, sure enough, Empire played at the same high level they did in game one, but it was mm -hmm. also Secret really just cracking under the pressure, I'd say. And, and I think to, to go back to Will's point with the turn,